Python is the programming language of choice in deep learning. Python is heavily supported by deep learning frameworks, numerical computation libraries, data processing, and monitoring tools. So far, we have discussed recommended development environment and code editor for deep learning. In the next few slides, we will give a brief introduction to Python. Python is the programming language of deep learning. The data science toolkit and deep learning frameworks and tools are well supported in Python. For a more comprehensive discussion on Python, practical Python is highly recommended. The link is shown on this slide. For deployment, Python may not be the choice of language because of the overhead. Usually, trained models are converted to C or C++ or compiled to a more lightweight representation. Python was initially targeted for system administration because it is easy to use. It became popular in scientific community. Let us see Python in action. Let us activate it on our terminal. Then let us create a simple hello world program. Let us do the same on this code by creating a source file. Let us activate Python on terminal and then let us uh, build a simple hello world program. Let's type Python, then print hello world. That's it. Let us do the same in VS Code. First, let's create a new file, select the language, that would be Python, save it. Let's name our file as demo one. And then print hello world. You can see the auto completion there and the helper coming out. Then save and run. You can see on the terminal hello world. In deep learning, we do a lot of computations involving numbers. Input and output data are represented in terms of numbers. Speech, text, image, video, and point cloud are all represented in terms of numbers. The model inference is also represented in terms of numbers, and so are the model weights. Python has a very good support for number storage and manipulation. Third-party libraries such as NumPy, Inops, SciPy, Pandas, and Torch itself make data manipulation a lot easier. Python supports commonly used data types from Boolean true or false to high precision floating point numbers. It also supports complex numbers. Let us see Python in action. First, let us generate 10 random integers store them in a list and print. We will discuss this in the next few slides. So in this demo, we will generate 10 random integers, uh, store them in a list, and then we will print um, the minimum, the maximum, and we will also sort and then print, okay? So let's start. So the first is uh, we need to import a certain package. It, its name, uh, its name is random just for, we will use it for generating random integers. Then uh, we will have a list and let's call it X for the mean time. A list is enclosed in a pair of brackets, okay? And then uh, from here, you can already see that the code is auto-completing itself, okay? So it's, you just need to call, uh, random that random int um, will generate random numbers between zero to 100 and we'll do this for 10 times okay so here uh, the github copilot is already providing me some clues on what to type and then all I need to do is just tab 
okay so the code is already there okay so this is something that uh, in other platforms or other tools cannot do just like for example in jupyter okay um now let us uh print this okay so you can see even the printing it's already providing me some clues on what to do okay then save and then um let's run this one okay run so you can see on the terminal it generated uh 10 numbers okay so the the next thing we're going to do let's clear this first the next thing we're going to do is to be uh to print some uh, basic uh, properties of the list like min and max okay so what i'm going to do is print uh, and then i'm going to say min and then uh, and then it already provided me with some clues on what to, to type next so all i need to do is just to press the tab okay and then i'm going to do the same for max everything is there it's automatic um and then um, lastly, it's even providing me some clues. So maybe I want to print the sum. I will open them. Let's see. For let's uh, print the sum. So then after that, let's um, sort it. Okay. So we will sort it. So I'll just call uh, sort. Okay. And then um, that's it. No, no, no need to supply anything. But take note that x calling x that sort uh, will sort it and it will return um, none. So I, I am not supposed to store it because that's going to return none, okay? You can see the return value if you type it again, um, x.sort, let's see. Oh, where's the helper? There, there, you can see there none, okay? There, it's not, it's returning none. So don't um, um, store the return value, just I'll call x that sort. And then uh, after that, print the sorted x. And then let's run to see if um, it's doing the code uh, logic properly. Okay. So those are the 10 numbers. The minimum is 15, it seems correct. And then the maximum is 97, the sum is 404. And then when you print it in a sorted manner, it's actually sorted. Python supports data type cast. Let us generate 10 floats, store them in a list and print. Then let's convert each float into in and print. So for this demonstration, what we're going to do is we will generate 10 random floats. Uh, for simplicity, we're going to generate 10 floats uh, between 0 to 100 and then store them in a list, print, and then what we're going to do next is we're going to convert each element of the list into integer and then print. So to do this, we'll keep the line import random. We'll store, we will store the list in X as well. So we'll call random. And there is a random function there to generate a random number. But take note again that random number generates uh, a number between zero and one. So, but what what we want is uh, between zero and one and one hundred. So we'll just multiply this one by one hundred, and then we'll keep the rest. Okay. So just again press the tab. Okay, and then we'll print each one, and then just print x. Then what we're going to do next is we're going to convert each uh, element into integers. So we'll just call for i, um, and then we will iterate through each element of the list for i in x. And then what we're going to do is we will cast i to integer, and then uh, we'll print x again and that should have converted each element into integer will run and then we can see there for example the last element is 55.096 it's converted to 55 and the rest is we we do the the same thing for the rest uh, we convert each um float into integer
after numbers, string is another data type that we process in AI. Specific fields such as natural language processing, optical character recognition, syntax recognition, and multimodal learning deal with text. Python has a good support for text. Let us present some examples. Strings are values enclosed in single or double quotes. A string can be indexed. It can be concatenated. It can be manipulated like substring, substitution. We can search for a string in a string, or we can search for a substring in a string. And there are many other functions um, that support string manipulations in Python. Like for example, in this case, converting string to uppercase. So for this demonstration, uh, we will see programming strings in Python. Let's start with a blank file. Okay, so let's say x is equal to deep learning is fun. So that is x is now defined as a string. You can print it if you want. Okay, so, and then let's print um, a part of the string, okay? And let's say we want to print from five onwards. So that's five onwards. So from character five or the, the indexing start with zero. So that's the six, sixth element in theory, that's the sixth element. So we'll print from the sixth element, which is L onwards to the end, okay? And then uh, let's see, what about concatenation? So let's print X plus another string and that is um, exclamation mark. So it's going to print deep learning is fun with an exclamation mark. And then we'll do um, um, string replacement or substitution. So basically we will print X and then replace um, the every current with a bit with, let, let's, not, let's not use shallow, let's uh, use machine. So it's going to be machine learning is fun, okay? And then um, we will also see if a certain, um, substring is present okay so let's see let's print if we can find um um the key the string learn in x okay so it's going to return either true or false and then lastly we'll go we'll print x upper so to convert everything in uppercase. All right, so let's run this. Okay, so that's deep learning is fun. And then the substring that is from five onwards going to be learning is fun. And then this is concatenation. So deep learning is fun. And then we have machine learning is fun. Uh, take note that the exclamation marks not present anymore because we didn't store it back in X, okay? And then whether the learn word is in deep learning, uh, sorry, in machine learning is fun, the answer is yes. Oh no, sorry, if it's in the deep learning is fun, the answer is yes. And then uh, we'll print everything in uppercase. So that is going to be the upper. None is a special type of variable value that is used as placeholder. It could be used if we are unsure of its data type or there is really no value at all, but might have a value later. Here is an example where the email address is not known, thus is set to none. One of the basic data structures to contain numbers, strings, and objects is list. 
a list is a data structure that is mutable or changeable, ordered sequence of elements. A list is made of opening and closing braces, may contain zero or more elements that are separated by a comma. A list can be indexed. Two lists can be concatenated. Items can be appended or inserted in a list. Okay, so let's have another demonstration. In this case, uh, is list programming. So let's start with a blank uh, file again, and then uh, we'll generate a list. Uh, we, you, you can type the elements of the list manually if you want. For example, let's type one, two, and then it can be uh, a mixture, it could be hello, and then there could be a list within a list. So we can have, um, and even within a list, you can have different data types. Um, so in this case, we have an integer, we have a float, okay? And then you can have another string as well. Okay. So, and then um, you can print the element of the list, so you simply print X. So if you run, it will print each element of the list. Now uh, you can print a specific element in this. For example, you want to print the hello, that's going to be the third element. So it has an index two. So when you run it, it's going to print hello. Okay, and then um, you can also concatenate two or more lists. For example, let's uh, define a new list. Uh, let's. Uh, delete this one, okay? And then uh, suppose it's a sequence of numbers, okay? So that will be for i in, for i in range 10. So it's just basically a sequence of uh, 10 numbers generated by the range function. So it's in, increasing order, okay? And then you have another one, which is y for i in the range of, maybe let's change it, okay? So instead of from 10 to, from zero to 10, uh, we'll start with, shall we say 100 to 110, and then there's an increment of one as well, okay? So let's print uh, x, and then print y, and then let's see the numbers. Oops, there's an error, uh, unmatch. So there is an unmatch, let's remove that one. Um, okay. Uh, okay, let's see. That's it, okay. Uh, we were able to fix the bug, okay. So that prints uh, from zero to nine because the range doesn't include the end. And this one will print from 100 to 109. Now let us concatenate the two lists. So by simply calling the plus, it's not going to really add the two element, uh, element by element, um, but instead it's going to concatenate y at the end of x. So save it. Let's clear this screen first so we have, we can see the output. Uh, is, we, we can easily see the output. So we print and then you can see there the x, there's the y, and then that's the concatenation. We can also do uh, insert, okay? So for example, let's insert um, at index zero, uh, an, that's the syntax of insert. Insert, let's see, 
um, insert index. There you can see the index. And then the object in this case is an integer. Okay. So we can insert at index zero. That's the first element. Okay. And then let's see, let's put negative one. And then let's print X again. Okay, so you will see there the negative one is inserted at the beginning of X. Well, another example is a pen, very common. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's start again with X from zero to nine. And then we'll append at the end. It's called append, and let, let's append ten. So it will now complete the range from zero to ten. Uh, to verify, let's print x, and then that's going to print from zero to ten. Uh, let's clear this, and then run. Oops, there is an error. It's not append. That's uh, okay. That's append. And then let's clear this one again and then run. So that's zero to 10. A powerful operator of list is slicing. Slicing syntax is made of three fields, the start and end interval. Each one is separated by a colon. If any field is missing, it is assumed to be the default zero for start, last index or negative one for the end, and one for the interval or step. Let's see some examples. Let's demonstrate slicing. Here we have 10 integers in ascending order generated using the range function. You can verify it by printing it. Next is we may want to print only the first three elements. So here we will have print X, we will use slicing to columns, starting is zero, the end is three, and then the interval is one. So print, and then it will print the first three elements. Let's erase this one again. Now, suppose we want to print from second element, to the end. So we will print print x, second element is zero, one. So the first index is one. And then the last, actually you don't need to indicate the interval, we don't need to indicate also, just print it. And then here, that's the second element onwards to the end. That's the last element would be nine. Then the next one is, suppose we want to print every other element. So here we print X, uh, every other element. So we don't indicate anymore the starting, the end, but we need to indicate the interval, which is two. So if you run this, let's clear this first run. You will see there, it will print all the even integers because that's what is printing every other element of the list starting from zero, ending in nine. Then the, the last one is a trick. Uh, suppose we want to print the list in reverse. What we need to do is to change the interval from the default, which is one to negative one. In that case, it will start from the end and decrement the index until it reaches the first index, which is zero. So print, that is X. And then two columns, just indicate negative one as the interval. And then let's print this one. Let's clear this first and then run. You can see there the printing in reverse. Just like other popular programming languages, Python supports loops. There are two basic loops the for loop and the while loop. Common use of for loop is iterating over each element of a list. 
while it's commonly used in executing a code block until a certain condition is no longer true. For readability, reuse of code and maintainability, it is always best to put together a code block that does a specific job or task in one function. Python supports function definition using the def keyword. A function can have zero or more inputs. The same is true for outputs. Here is an example of a function that filters or selects even numbers in a list of integers and returns a new list. Let's define a new function that accepts a list of integers. This function squares each element of the list and store the result in a newly created list. This newly created list is then returned. Let's define that function using def. Let's call that function square list. Here you can see that the GitHub Copilot is already auto-completing my definition of square list. The only thing that we need to do now is call it. And even the calling is auto-completed. And then lastly, print. Run. You can see that this is the input list. And this is the list after calling square list. Python also supports object-oriented programming. It supports class and inheritance. It also supports class member variables and methods. In this example, we declare class person, which is initialized by name and age using the init method. Once a class person has been instantiated and its value stored in a variable, we may want to print the value of the variable. In this case, we use string conversion of the variable. And this is done through the str method. Let's define a new class. Let's call it pet. Here you can see that the GitHub Copilot is already completing the init method of this class. Let's accept as is. And you can see here the member variables of the class path. Let's define a new method and let's call it get name. And it's also auto completed. And then lastly, let's define the string version of this class. And then it has no definition here, but you can write your own definition here. It's auto-completed as well. Now we have that class. We'll instantiate a variable p, pet, and here we'll, let's name it Rojo with h2. And then we can print, for example, get name. And then it's auto-completed. And then print p itself. It should call the double underscore str method. Let's run this. And you can see Rojo. And then the second print is Rojo is a cat and is two years old. Our deep learning models will be built using object oriented techniques. In particular, a model is a subclass of. PyTorch NN module. For example, in this case, we build a differentiable model which multiplies a tensor with a sample from a normal distribution. For more complete discussion on Python for machine learning, please read through the practical Python documentation. Thank you for listening.